Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of CSK News. It's going to be a packed episode as we touch on everything that's happened this past week while I was gone on vacation. We're going to talk about rumors that are still out there as well as confirm roster changes. Alongside that, some other CSK News stories for this episode. So hope you guys all enjoy. Let's get into it. I think I'm ready. And first off, I do want to talk about the mystery himself, that is Optic Mixwell, who's going to stay on that roster, at least for the time being. I think I can speak with all of us who are watching this right now, saying that Mixwell is a complete mystery to us, as to whether he's going to stay with Optic or not. I'm amazed, first off, by Hector, the owner at Optic Gaming, what he has done to keep Mixwell on that team, especially after heavy rumors last week that he was going to Mouse Sports. They instead, of course, picked up Styko from Team Hellraisers, and of course, Sonny from Penta to fill out that roster. And Mixwell, for the time being, will stay on Optic, although it seems very, very likely that you know he could leave. He could stay and he could leave. A 50-50 shot. It seems everyone right now is confused as to what his future holds. And here's what I brought from this. They're actually their latest Optic Vision episode. I was a part of that, my voice at least, for the second time. I was kind of kind of unique about that. I'll show you guys these clips from their latest Optic Vision episode, which kind of hints at an unstable future for Mixwell. What's what's going to happen? Although he's only their secondary offer, their primary offering role is switching around constantly. I think he is the glue to this team. Although they have very talented players, if Mixwell leaves, that leaves them with only three solid core players, and a team cannot survive. With that, I'm never gonna hold any player to to that that has that sort of relationship with me to to a certain degree of, of, of captivity in a sense. It's not it's not it's not done, right? We're we're working through certain business ceilings that need to be put forth in order for that to happen. But we're making it extremely easy for for Oscar to go back home, so he can you know, be back with his family. And who really knows what's going on with Optic? It does seem Hector is trying to revolve everything around Mixwell and the, what those guys really want. So of course, they could announce a new fifth member and expect that announcement sometime soon before the end of August where DreamHack Malmo does come in. But they're gonna need a very strong fifth member, maybe Lowell from Mouse Sports, or maybe someone that Mixwell wants to remain more of a home atmosphere. So we'll see what happens with Optic Gaming sometime in this new near future. But it seems there are so many other rumors out there right now. Let's talk on what's confirmed. We do have PTR has finally joined Complexity after leaving Team NRG just last week and he actually replace Desi spot Desi said this on Twitter a great I love when players can leave a roster and have nothing but good to say and what a great way he'll definitely be signed by some other North America team out there hopefully in the future now also I told you guys mouse sports did decide over Styko over Mixwell from a uh, team Hellraisers and so they're gonna replace him sometime soon team HR announced this on Twitter so by the time you guys are watching this episode expect an announcement of their newest fit member who hooch hooch is actually a former gamut member I know this is actually a long string of things I sorry if I'm confusing you guys hooch a former gamut Gaming member has actually hinted at Frozen, the 15 year old, the first ever 14 year old to actually make face at Pro League. He is now 15 years old. He actually hinted he might be the newest Hellraiser player. There's also a long list of players out there that HR could sign though in place of Styko. Now, on top of that, the biggest news you guys know about we do have Zeus leaving Gamut Gaming and going to Navi. Again, I, I wish I could actually display my full emotions on this, but I know a lot of you guys would probably judge me. I know a lot of you want to see him move. A lot of you guys wanted to see him stay. I was on the ladder. I really wanted to see him actually build that team up. He actually tweeted out this as to why he did leave Navi and the explanation did make sense. So Navi has now signed him and Seized is now back to the active roster for the time being as well as their new coach. Their old coach Andy is still going to stick around as the analyst and their new coach is the former Gambit Gaming coach Kane and apparently he left because the other Gambit Gaming members did not get along with him. They didn't like his strategies and so Zeus did not want to see him kicked by himself and they left together. So a very good, I guess very good reasoning there, very solid but it would have been nice to see him actually lead that Gambit Gaming team maybe to another major, maybe to something big as well, another big title out there. But yes, Zeus is now off Gambit and now back to Navi, and that was in huge news. Now on top of that, we do have a few more rumors out there, including Olaf Meister and Dennis. It's almost, well, pretty much 100% confirmed those guys will be leaving the Fnatic roster. Olaf Meister most likely to FaZe Clan, but Dennis is a different story. There's a lot of rumors out there. Dennis obviously looking for a new job, but who's going to place him? There's a long list of teams out there who probably want an experienced guy like that as well, and that's going to wrap it up for all the rumors and confirmations we have so far. If you guys were confused, I do apologize. There were so many changes going on and so many things to talk about, so I had to cover what I know for now. I probably missed some information out there, but I'll make sure to cover it in the next episode. And also, we just fell so short of CSGO history. I know you guys remember this girl's face. I'm actually going to link her Twitter down below. That is Michaela Lintrup, and she fell just short, actually two places short of making her Face It Pro League debut. I talked about this last week when I actually had my last CSGO News episode a few days ago, and she was so close, actually in first place after day one of the two-day trials to make it to FPL, and she missed her 
spot by just a few points, actually finishing in fourth place there. She actually lost a last second match to lose those two places. So Michaela Lindtrup, congrats to you on actually making top five and better luck next time. She does, of course, have a, a pretty good chance of coming around next time. And again, if she keeps at it, she hopefully will get it in the future and become the first girl to ever land a spot in FPL. And again, a one last shout out for World Gaming, guys. They're hosting a $90,000 tournament in Canada this week and the qualifiers do start. They're online qualifiers. So for all of you guys who have friends out there and want a cheap online tournament to try and qualify for, a $90,000 tournament, if you and your friends can get together $25, you can sign up for the online qualifiers. And if you guys actually manage to qualify for the finals or make it through the actual prelims, you can get flown out to Canada for this tournament. Signups are down below. If you guys don't even want to participate, check out their website down below, World Gaming. Thank you. They have now sponsored the last four videos or so. And huge thanks to them and all of you guys who have signed up. Please make sure to DM me pictures on Twitter of you guys actually getting together and playing the online qualifiers. It'd be a really fun thing to actually show on CSGO News. Now also based off that, I did take a vacation last week. Many of you guys know about, if anyone was wondering, it, it was pretty fun. It was very cold and that's why I actually came back a day earlier. So now on to our last story for today's episode. And this last story is a very special one. So for all of you guys who stuck around for this, thank you very much for that. But I do want to talk about the I by Power team and apparently them being signed. It's still a rumor, but I do want to talk about Raynat as well. Raynat on screen for all of you is the founder of Tempo Storm. Many of you know about Tempo Storm is one of those teams who reached out to Days and said they were interested in coming back to CSGO and potentially buying him out or other players involved around him as well. So it seems that Raynat and one of his friends, Eloise, was actually streaming. And I'll show you guys a quick clip of this, of what he had to say during that stream. And keep on mind, keep in mind, guys, what he actually said, the exact words that he says, and then I'll explain it afterwards. So here's his friend, Eloise, and Raynat in the background, the founder of Tempo Storm. Here's what he had to say. All right, uh, oh Eloise, God. hit ready. Oh, uh. I think Sebastian Park just hired the, the I buy power team away from me, I think. Wait, what? I actually hate that guy, dude. You don't remember Sebastian? Right now, I'm streaming. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> oh, fuck. So if you listen closely, you heard Raynad, the founder of Tempo Storm, clearly say, hire them away from him. So that could mean one of two things. Maybe he had interest in buying the I by Power players. Many of you know, a long time ago when the actual ESL unbans did come through just last month, we had days say that Tempo Storm was one of the teams that actually reached out to him and it was interested in coming back to the CSGO scene if they could actually buy out him and other players around him. So Tempo Storm clearly has an interest in the CSGO team and I by Power players specifically. And on top of that, we do have him mention the name Sebastian Park. Park. Now Sebastian Park on screen for all of you, which Raynad did mention his name. He's actually the esports developer for the Houston Rockets. So this means one of two things. Both we have Sebastian Park from Houston Rockets have interest in the I by Power team. And alongside that, Raynad from Tempo Storm also has interest, even despite the fact that they're only unbanned, the I by Power players that is, only unbanned from ESL events so far. It seems very nice though. The hype is still around these guys and it could just be a rumor, but it seems evident that there are two teams out there, or two organizations that still have interest in buying these guys out. It could be the Houston Rockets, it could be Tempo Storm, but that's what Raynat had to say, and that's what we have for you guys today on today's episode of CSK News. Hope you all enjoyed, and thank you all for the great support on my last few videos. Honestly, it's, it's been such a great month so far, and thank you guys for that. I can, I, I can say... Thanks to you, I have a big announcement coming sometime soon, which will involve another big YouTuber out there, a huge CSGO YouTuber, and I'm so excited to announce that. And it's all thanks to you guys who watch, like, comment. So seriously, thank you guys very much. Hope you all enjoyed. I will see you guys all tomorrow in two days with more CSGO news. As always, little blah, 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 And uh, turn down your headsets, because I'm going to yell, because I'm very excited. So here we go. Thank you all for watching. Ah!